In this video, we're going to start looking at enriched categories. So the general idea is that in a normal category, we have some objects, A, B, and C, and so on. And between any two objects, we have a set of arrows. And usually we denote this um, A, B, and then we also have a set of arrows going from B to C, which is HOM BC. And finally, we are also interested in the set of arrows going between A and C. So this would be HOM AC. Now, if we're given some particular arrow F going from A to B, and another particular arrow G going from B to C, then we can compose these and get an arrow G after F, which goes from A to C. In other words, there's a function of HOM sets, so we call this function composition, and for this particular example, it goes from the HOM set of B and C cross the HOM set of A and B to the HOM set of A and C. And what does this function do? Well, we've seen it takes some element G in the HOM set of B and C and some element F of the HOM set of A and B, and it maps it to its composite, that's G after F. In the case of normal categories, we also have some further requirements. So we require that there be a special arrow, uh, namely the identity on each object. We can formulate this in terms of set maps as follows. So for each object A and C, we require there to be a map called the identity on A that goes from the singleton set to um, a, a. What does this map do? Well, it just maps the singleton set to the arrow that's the identity on A. We are now able to reformulate the usual definition for a normal category as follows. So we say that we just uh, want a collection of objects, and for each pair of objects, we want a HOM set. Moreover, for each triple of objects, we want a composition function, which goes between the Cartesian product of the corresponding HOM sets to uh, the third HOM set. And finally, we want a special map for each object that picks out the identity within uh, the corresponding HOM sets. So this is a way to give the data for a category. Now we also require these data to satisfy certain axioms, and generally in the case of a normal category, we express these axioms in terms of elements of the HOM sets. What we require is associativity, of composition, so that's saying that f after g after h bracketed in the two different ways is equal, and unitality, which expresses doing the identity at the codomain after an arrow is the same thing as that arrow, which is the same thing as doing the arrow after the identity at the domain. Instead of specifying that these equations hold on elements, we can also mm, translate these conditions into uh, commutative diagrams that involve the HOM sets, the composition, and the identity maps. To see how this works in the case of associativity, let's take maps f going from a to b, 
g going from b to c and h going from c to d. Now we start in the diagram with a triple of maps, so that's h, g, f, and now first we're going to compose h and g and leave f alone, so we get h after g comma f, and then we're going to compose these remaining two maps to get h after g in brackets after f. Alternatively, we could have composed g and f first. So what we get then is h comma g after f. And then we can compose these two maps to get h after g after f bracketed in the other way. And we want these two elements to be equal. Here what I've done is I've chased uh, an element around a diagram that I'm going to construct. And so what maps have I used here? Well, the maps I've used are uh, precisely uh, the composition maps between the corresponding HOM sets. So in the first case, we're doing the composition cross the identity. So we're composing the first two arguments and leaving the third alone. And then we're following that by another composition. And on the bottom, we're leaving the first argument alone. So we have an identity across the composition because we're composing the second two arguments and then the second step is just uh, just a composition map. So what I've done now is I've expressed the equation we had before in terms of maps. So we could say as a condition for associativity that we want the for all triples of maps HGF we want this top composition to equal the bottom composition. And this would be equivalent to the on elements uh, axioms that I gave before. However, there's a more economical way of doing this. It's by uh, requiring a diagram of HOM sets to commute. And in this case, this uh, one element would just be one instance of the, the larger diagram commuting. To do this, we need to see where the elements live. So the starting element lives in HOM CD cross HOM BC cross HOM AB. So this is a set and it has triples of maps. And the top element lives in HOM BD cross HOM AB. The right element lives in HOM AB, and the bottom element is in HOM CD cross HOM AC. We've already figured out what maps we need to use. So the top map here is going to be composition cross the identity, and this is the composition on um, the HOM sets, HOM CD, and HOM BC. And then the second map in this uh, sequence is just a uh, single composition. And this makes sense because the um, objects are uh, correctly overlapping so that we can apply a composition. And the bottom route is identity cross composition followed by composition. Okay, if we now stipulate that this white diagram of HOM sets and composition maps commute, what we're implicitly doing is we're saying that for all triples of maps going from A to B, from B to C and C to D, we want um, their composition in the two different ways to be uh, the same. So we're requiring associativity for um, all triples of maps between these four objects. One can also apply this idea for expressing the unitality of composition. So if we have a map f going from a to b, and we have this identity at a, which is a function going from the singleton set to the HOM set between a and a, then we can express unitality as follows. So we map f 
to a pair f comma star and we then map this to f comma the identity at a and finally we compose to get f after the identity at a and we want this to be equal to the original f Let's see what maps we've used. Well, this map is just uh, the isomorphism that maps each element uh, to it paired with uh, this singleton uh, element. The second map is the identity on the first element of this pair. And the second uh, pair is mapped using our identity at A function which we specified above. This might be a bit confusing with the notation I've used. So the, the identity on the left is really just the identity that maps each element to itself, while the identity on the right is this function we've defined from the singleton to the home set of A and itself. And the final map that we've used is composition. Again, we've just looked at one particular element but actually what we want is a diagram of home sets to commute. So here on the left hand side, we know that F is in home AB and this F comma star is in home AB cross the singleton set. On the right, we have a pair which is in Hom A B cross Hom A A. And finally, on the top, we have the composition, which is in Hom A B. And the maps we used are this isomorphism identity cross the map identity at A and composition. And we want equality here on the top. All right, so I hope I've convinced you that we can express both the data and the axioms required of a normal category purely in terms of set maps and commutativity of certain diagrams in the category of sets. The reason we went through this trouble is that we can now generalize to having HOM objects in other categories. What we'll want to do is we'll want to say that an enriched category is a collection of objects where the HOM sets aren't necessarily sets. So we want to have some other type of HOM object which lives between uh, two objects in an enriched category that isn't necessarily a member of the category of sets. We can now ask ourselves what type of properties we used um, from the category of sets in order to define a normal category. So the first thing we used is this product here. So that's the Cartesian product of sets. And we needed this in order to have a notion of pairing um, morphisms so that we could compose them. The second uh, item we used from the category of sets is this singleton set. So we needed to somehow specify uh, an identity uh, map and we did so by saying that it was a map from the singleton set to the HOM between A and itself. Finally, we also used this isomorphism down here we had to have that the HOM object between A and B was isomorphic to uh, the HOM AB uh, product with the uh, singleton set. So this is another property we needed. Finally, in the previous diagram, I implicitly used, so we had this uh, triple product of HOM sets, if you remember, and I didn't put any brackets there, so we implicitly used that the product in set is 
associative up to natural isomorphism. It turns out that these properties are enough for us to come up with a notion of an enriched category. So that's replacing HOM sets with generalized HOM objects, and these HOM objects live in a category where we can form some type of product that has some type of unit and that uh, has this isomorphism down here and where the product is associative. Since these data are exactly the data that we require of a monoidal category, this means that we can transfer the concept of category to an enriched category, which is enriched over a monoidal category. And this is precisely what we'll do when we give the following definition. <laughs> 